Hi everyone, my name is Shilan and I'm one of the consultants at Novia Consultancy Services. So we are a Symbio product consultancy firm specialized in public consultation and engagement. At Novia, you are in capable hands of experts in the field of human health and disease, chemistry, genetics, and industrial design. We are here to give you the best expertise and advice on the public perception uh, that exists towards synthetic biology and anticipate the trends towards your um, personal products. Our consultancy services were set up after intense um, discussion and brainstorming between the consultants. Through this process, uh, we touched on many subjects such as the potential of synthetic biology in tackling invasive species, to the development of new personal products that would use bacteria instead of chemicals. In a way, bacteria acting as beneficial living tools. We also discussed the perception that already exists towards bacteria as living things and towards synthetic biology overall. And the outcome of this process led to the establishment of the core value of our company, which is how can we explore people's perception of synthetic biology as it starts to exist in everyday life. And we've decided to do this using a range of specifically designed conceptual personal products, which help bring these issues into the domestic household and a part of the day-to-day -day routine with which the people can engage with. And Ethan is going to tell you more about these um, consultancy props. So, at Novia, we create demonstrative products that simulate synthetic biology applications for the purpose of data gathering and feedback. We use the same design process that industrial designers would use, which is identifying core themes like biofuels or bacteria as chemicals. Um, we then prototype and create storyboards, product demonstrations, to get the information of what these products do across. We use this in an ex exhibition, as some of you may have seen from earlier. Uh, exhibition environments are important because it's neutral ground. People can discuss and in informally about what they really think about the product rather than having a business end uh, kind of pushing them to think one thing or another. There is interaction and immersion. Rather than just having a phone call to get an opinion or a questionnaire, uh, they'll actually have people rubbing, say, sun cream on their skin or eating a little tablet and seeing how it feels. I mean, we can get actual feedback that way. Suggestions, like the suggestion board as well, um, is a way that we can get a dialogue between the public and corporations. Now, we, we pitched three different products for the exhibition. First being uh, asking the question of, are we comfortable with chemicals being used Instead, or sorry, bacteria being used instead of chemicals. Secondly, are we comfortable using bacteria, a living organism on our skin instead of sun cream? And third, we can choose our personalized uh, side effects, so personalized pharmacology. If you could choose the effects of your contraceptive, what would be? This is already the case with different brands. So. Now, if we were to pitch this exhibition after some refinements to Ars Electronica, we would essentially be able to get the other data from 250,000 people. And likewise, we could use in Science Gallery Grow Your Own, we can get data from an Irish context. This amount of resources would easily allow us to become specialists in the field. So we believe our services, once fully initiated, will be in high demand as there are many potential stakeholders that could benefit from what we have on offer. These include scientists who want to gain a better understanding of the public perception towards the work they do in the lab on a day-to-day -day basis. It includes the general public with whom we'll be interacting with. And in comparison to straight-up research, our data will be collected through dialogue with the general public. And finally, businesses and companies who, again, want to gain a better understanding of the perception that exists towards their products. Um, company, for example, um, would be Orogenics, who are developing new therapy for lifelong protection against tooth decay using synthetically modified bacteria. And Novio and our services can really pave the way for their products um, before they reach the market. So over the next 6, 12 to 18 months, we'd like to fully establish our consultancy firm. Over the next few months, we'd like to further develop the props that we already have and campaign, and also refine our business model. We'd like to invest in interactive methods of gathering feedback, which we think is very important. Compile a six month uh, comprehensive report following our attendance at various exhibition and showcases. And we'll be particularly interested in the Irish context, as mentioned earlier, as we think such research has not already been carried out in Ireland. By 12 months, we'd like to have collaborated with scientists and research departments, particularly in Trinity College, identify and secure various different clients, and be willing to pitch our services and market the report we have by then at competitive prices based on the scale of the work required, and gradually pave the, uh, pave the way for the industry that is um, fast approaching. And finally, by 18 months, we'd like to have published a more 
comprehensive 12 month report um, and start to bring in revenue through the different contracts, establish our headquarters uh, with a collective fund of 50,000 euros, and work towards developing our services over abroad, over overseas, and establish our firm globally. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are Novia and marketers for Symbio products. Thanks. So you, you, you've almost got this like a performance piece, like you're in character, right? We're ready. Um, <laughs> have you looked at other areas of science where you think uh, people could have done this work ahead of time and therefore not gotten so much public rejection? Because there has been quite a lot of public rejection of other scientific breakthroughs because nobody was doing any of this stuff. Have you looked at other examples? Um, I think GM is a very obvious uh, point here that um, it, people, they didn't understand entirely and it was left open for anyone to tell them what was or was not true. What was or was not true about uh, genetically modified organisms, which has led to a complete switch in focus when we come to synthetic biology so that we basically we can avoid that particularly sticky uh, Through using an exhibition, we can basically avoid the idea of using ethics because it's not actually going to do what the bad thing is supposed to do. It's just a demonstration. So we can get the feedback without any of the hassle. Would you be concerned at all that your products might trigger the backlash that you're helping to consult other people against triggering, if you like? Not really. I think um, our products, the, they, they're obviously in a uh, scale. So if you start with the toothpaste, that'll be the sort of down the scale. And as you move up to the contraceptive option, it's a little bit more sort of wacky idea. So I think that's what we've even decided to have a range of product at different scales um, to obviously test people's limits as to how far they're willing to go. And I think that's something important that maybe hasn't been investigated so far. So it'd be interesting to look at um, and obviously take it from there. I mean, we haven't yet approached um, the public. So maybe that's something that we can further investigate over the next six months. And it'll be something that it's, it's, it's an essential part of our plan for the next six months. Um, might there be issues about public trust in what you're doing, particularly if you're being sponsored or funded by industry with a vested interest in synthetic biology products? Well, we've been very careful to avoid that. So um, that's why we intend to create our uh, props, our uh, demonstrative products, many years before the real products will actually end up getting through trials, uh, getting EPA clearance, getting FDA clearance. So while we will look ahead into trends, the hope we will manage to inure the public to uh, the effects or what the future might be, however bold and bright or... And also creating a dialogue, so if we do get negative feedback, we'd be able to consult the business and say, well, people aren't going to like that, so... <laughs> so it's really taking the concept of, you know, again, what the trends are, are showing and being a step ahead of, of the, the market, really. So you're combining market research with public service? Yes, but benefiting both, whereas I think market research is more, more about making money and selling the product, but we have a vested interest in the public and, and their knowledge of the product as well, so benefiting both.